Our keynote speaker for the seminar today is Dr. James R. Appleton. Dr. James R. Appleton is a high-profile strategic thinker. He served as the chancellor and then president of the University of Redlands, USA. Besides that, he served on various faculty and administrative positions at Oakland University in Rochester, Michigan, and in University of Southern California as a member of the faculty, as vice president for student affairs, and then as president for development. During his career, he made a personal commitment to teaching and taught graduate courses that focus on issues and trends in higher education. Dr. Appleton has also served on several boards and committees that include UNESCO Working Group, the Executive Committee of the Board of the Washington-based National Association of Independent Colleges and Universities, and the President's Council of NCAA. He is a trustee at two international universities, United States International University, Africa, and Foreman Christian College, a chartered university, Pakistan. He received his undergraduate degree from Wheaton College in Wheaton, Illinois, and earned a master's and then PhD degree from Michigan State University. Dr. Appleton, we are honored to have you here amongst us today. I request you to please come to the podium. It's a privilege for me to be here. And I wanna say at the outset, we'll be talking about a topic that uh, um, I know a lot about because I've had to operate it. I've had to be in the middle of it. Middle of it. I don't see myself as um, a person that is here because I have a lot more to say than what you might already know or want to be thinking about. So today we want to share things, um, and I'll, I'm going to speak about it. I'm not uh, afraid to do that, or I'm not hesitant to do it. But I want to make sure that you realize I feel I'm talking to colleagues and with colleagues about these subjects so we can think together about maybe how to do these things just a little bit better in our own lives. Um, I, I agreed to do this um, topic of quality insurance because of the importance in our countries and across our borders internationally. And I wanna thank you for this opportunity. And uh, recently I reviewed uh, the, um, and I wanna pull this out, the 2023 Pakistan Higher Education Commission's, HEC's document about quality education, or quality insurance, titled Pakistan Precepts, Standards and Guidelines for Quality Assurance in Higher Education. I found this copy patterned through conversations between Pakistan and the United Kingdom to be useful as an integration to a large degree international quality assurance standards and illustrates what might be a trend that is shaping in our universities, whether it is in the UK or Pakistan or the United States, standards that can be applied internationally. And I feel that's very important. My experience is primarily in the United States as a university faculty member and administrator, there's been comment about it, university president, close to 10 years as chair of the Western Association of Schools and Colleges called WASC, which is one of the U.S. regional accrediting associations. So I know about some of these things and have served as chair of several accreditation teams, including chair of several committees reviewing international um, institutions. So yes, I have those experiences, but I'm, I'm not speaking to people that are not unaware of the importance of these topics. I hope the review will refresh in these things, help us to be alert to what we ought to be doing. I am um, I am familiar, of course, then also with the New England Commission on Higher Education, which is Nietzsche, the body with which Foreman Christian College and University is working to achieve US accreditation for the university. Okay, so from all of these experiences, my hope that in years ahead, what will emerge is some international accrediting body. That is to bring the best of the world's educational institutions in even closer alignment, and that higher education that's now in U.S. and Pakistan will enjoy even closer relations. Uh, now I'll get to the topic. Quality assurance in education. It should be all of us that are at the forefront of all accreditation reviews. I wish to assert that university leaders must assume the responsibility for creating reasonable processes 
that ensure accountability for quality assurance at all of our institutions. While accounting the, for differences in style and recognizing that the discipline that is inferred is easier for some and more difficult for others, I believe that ensuring accountability is an oft forgotten and underutilized element of successful leadership. I think it's on our shoulders as the leaders to be more concerned about how we measure quality education. It's surprising to me that many organizations, and I'm not speaking of organization here or my own institution, but do not have a disciplined way to ensure progress on agreed upon objectives that can be measured that is the foundation of accreditation expectations. Developed through an iterative process among constituencies and members of a leadership team and other stakeholders, there must be specific ways developed and joined to ensure accountability and thus quality assurance. Quality assurance carries with it no big secrets. It is at the core of a, a discipline and must be viewed in, as an important institutional commitment at all levels at the institutional level, at the unit level, and program level, processes to ensure equality should be exercised in all of the areas and at all levels of higher education. I can't proceed further, of course, without stating emphatically that first and foremost, quality assurance must be built on what is the unique mission and vision of the institution being evaluated. And it is important to make explicit what learning outcomes are important to one's institution. While the processes might carry uh, to many institutions in many countries, and at whether private or public, it must be recognized that when that is done on an individual institution, it must begin with the specific mission of that institution that would then, in its detail, be measured. Um, Today's topic, quality assurance in higher education, must be thought to be rather complex. It might be even a burden to some that one might see as interfering with the normal work of the day. <laughs> quality assurance, measuring all of that. I got a lot to do. I, how can I put that on top of what I really do? Well, I have a different thought about it. I believe strongly that developing an effective framework for strategic planning and focusing quality education is essential to meeting the highest standards of higher education. It's not an add-on. It must be intensely engaged with the daily operation of the institution. All aspects of higher education, and these are my opinions, certainly the curriculum, the core of the enterprise, but as well the complementary and supporting programs, including governance, financial affairs, student life programs, operations, public affairs, that support or enhance the core mission of the, inst of the institution. By having an established and well-articulated set of procedures for ensuring quality control planning for every facet of the institution, higher inst educational institutions will be better and they're more effective in meeting the objectives and improve productivity. What I'm saying is that it is for all of us, and it is obviously for the core of the institution, which is the, the curriculum and those pieces of the institution that support that curriculum, but quality control should be considered for every aspect of, and every office and every function within the institution from the physical plant to the planning, from higher education, from, from student life to campus planning. We could name all of the topics within the institution. I believe we all bear a responsibility for quality enhancement as we look at moving our institution. Only by way of an illustration of areas and important topics, let's just me, me mention three or four or five. Faculty development. Well, is that the first thing on the list? No, I'm not saying that. These are illustrations. This isn't an outline. This is not to be followed, but they're illustrations. What? And I would ask the question, what programs and services can be developed to assist faculty new to the academy to meet our expectations? Pretty good thing to take 
measure of, it seems to me. Well, just another example, student affairs. As sports programs for students develop in institutions of higher education, and it's been amazing to me to see the growth in this country in this area, what facilities are needed, what coaches, what student support programs to develop the mission of education and not just public image of the institution? How can the sports programs contribute to the quality of the education of the environment? That's just one more of those areas. A third, fiscal affairs. What institutional processes can be developed to be sure that the middle management personnel of any institution will understand and value the budgetary decisions that will ensure their support in implementation? Is that at the top of the list for what we ought to do? Well, it's embedded in what we need to do if we're gonna do that well. External affairs, what program should we develop to raise external funds for endowed faculty positions? I'm just illustrating the kind of variety, but at the core of the institution, not just in the curriculum, that we ought to be paying attention to that subject, quality assurance. Or one more, now academic programs and curriculum. We must develop, a, here's the, must develop a program of quality assurance that defines carefully our academic objectives, programs to meet these objectives, and evaluation process to determine the measure of success and what changes can be made within budget constraints on the basis of what we find. Pretty big topic, pretty essential if we're talking about quality assurance. These are only illustrations of topics that might get us to think about the variety of agenda that should find their way into our documents for good planning that will then give us a fighting chance to achieve quality in our institutions. And I wanna talk a little bit about process as well as substance, both topics that complement each other. I'd like to hint at what it might look like in process. It is desirable to have a planning process that results in a document or documents that outline the following. And if I could have that screen, it would be terrific. Each element of planning that help us to achieve quality. Ah, uh, yes. Now this is just my list. You can, you can develop your list, but this is, a, this is a good reference point. It is desirable to have a planning process that results in a document or documents that outline the following for each element of planning. Remember, student affairs, curriculum, fiscal affairs, et cetera, et cetera. I was hinting at the, the topic. I'm talking about the institution, the lead of which is the curriculum and what supports the curriculum. I'm not trying to be funny about that, but it's broader than that. Each so if you're, think of the office you're in and whether you would be able to develop a process that would enable to you, you to determine what is the quality of the work that you do on behalf of supporting the essential core curriculum of, this, of your institution, wherever you are, and mine as well. Each priority in enough detail to know what is desired and how to know when it's achieved. Who is responsible for building, tracking, and implementation? And who does that person need in the institution to be engaged with her or him on this job, in this department, or in this curriculum, or in the board even? What resources are available or needed to be secured to enable you to meet those objectives? What is the timetable for completion? What are some of the details that should be considered in making decisions? What are the financial implications? And if that isn't built in early, you might be finding yourself back at number one up there and working the way through again and again and again and again. And is there a feedback process? Note what I just said again and again and again and again. That's my outline. It might fit you, but I'd like to encourage all um, that might be thinking about this to understand that this is not 
only for the curriculum. It is not only for the chemistry department. It's not only for, let's say, student affairs or athletics that support that core of the institution, but it's for the financial affairs office, and it's for the utility office, and it's for the new building office, and it's across the campus for those offices, units, functions that end up supporting the curriculum, the same process fits into a planning process at an institutional and a departmental level. Uh, I'll allow me to describe now just a sip of my process because you'll develop your own and I need to think of mine in detail. So as president of the University of, of Redlands, I would call together, together all the people who reported to me, could be deans or vice presidents, at a given time in the spring. And we usually worked it so it didn't interfere with commencement and we didn't interfere with, we, it was easy to figure out when could we figure two or three days when this group would get together. And the responsibility of that group would be, and now I'm talking process, not the content of it the process, what, 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 what would we do? We would look at the document that we had this last year that is the document, if I go back to 2012 and 2013, it has 55 pages to it. And there's not a department at the University of Redlands, essentially at the core, the faculty, that is not commented on in this document. And I would have asked the leadership group to talk to all the people in their units. And I would ask them to go through the process document, let's use that year, that document, in which they promised that they would complete certain things that were high priority. And that had had an iterative process previously. But 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 to um, what, what was in there for that year, and be prepared from the review in their unit to report at this retreat of the senior leadership, what's been done, what has completed, what really ended up not being as important as we said it would be. So we'll, we'll take it off, it's okay. And, and, and what's left to be done, didn't get it done. And we wouldn't come in and gnash and wail each other if there were things that really weren't completed, but in some ways it was a wonderful time to review how much of that we would have been able to complete in that given year. And then we would, we would, um, and they, the, the people that I was responsible for had already had that discussion in their units, and we would, we would uh, then talk there about it. And, and we would have some discussion about what of those things that weren't complete should we bring back, and what are the things that have been happening during the year that might now move some of the activity, some of the things we ought to consider to a higher level in the organization or to a higher level in their unit. And we've had a preliminary discussion. And then I would say, if you would go back and let's, why don't you take two or three weeks and schedule, of course, we'd had it set. Now I'm being sounding too informal, but it's set so that you could review this, determine which of these things are still important for our university, and what else does your unit and you believe we ought to think more seriously about as we move forward? And why don't you take that old stuff and why don't you take the new stuff and develop a draft for your area? And then guess what? We'd come together again and take all the all of that draft, all that grist, all that stuff that's there and have about two or three more days where we would sit and, and kind of as the more senior leadership, this is what we're getting out of our organization. We better pay attention. These people are really important. They know what it's like to be on the, on the street and on the road doing this. And let's take a look and let's put our overlay to this. Let's work on this. And sure enough, then you got to have, we talk, a responsibility going back and redo that document based upon this conversation. And, and then, get it back to us and we'll put it all together and we got a draft of the next year with the next two years and the next three years in this document. And now we'll send it to um, our board of trustees. 
and say to them, this is not the document. It's not finished, but you're, you're responsible for this organization. Why don't you take a look and give us any feedback you think you, that you'd want to give us before we get serious and bring it to you sometime in the near future. By fall, we would have a planning document that had been vetted very well within the institution. And I tested that once in a while. Every once in a while, I would go into an office, let's say into financial aid office, and I'd sit down with a person that's been there for some time, and I said, have you taken a look at the draft of the financial aid, uh, that part of our planning document? And it only took one year for me to do that without people know that I might sneak in and talk about that for everyone to say, yeah, we've really seen the draft. And, you know, I've been too busy. I haven't done much on it. And I'm not criticized that, but he, he'd seen it. He decided he didn't want to say much. Or a person might say, boy, we really had a great conversation about oh, the next policy change we ought to make in financial aid. You see what I mean? It's a different process if it's done well. I do. And I just wanted to give that kind of example. Uh, we, we just did it in one setting. The iterative process ended up with about three drafts, finally to the point of a planning document for the next three years that we could send to the board of trustees and get there, get them to pat us on the head and say, nice going, guys. Will. That's, but that's now what we're going to expect. Now let me focus just a little bit as we move along to the quality assurance in the curricular core, the curriculum. I want to focus our attention on quality assurance, accountability for our academic programs at the core of our colleges and universities. I'm, I'm not being funny about it that this is more important than the rest, but the rest supports what else we do through the curriculum and the academic program and helps us meet the statements of our mission. With focus, of course, on the educational effective indicators. Um, might be more easy for me to illustrate this. If you sh I show you one example that's been developed and is being used or will be used by Foreman Christian College and University, at least that's the promise I've heard um, from the appropriate offices and some of you. Uh, and if you'd put that uh, next slide up, that would be helpful. This is just a model that I picked up here. And oh, my goodness, I was so happy to see that it kind of fits what I was talking about just now, about how we went. So this is this is um, um, a foreman uh, piece, and I'm just using it. I'm, I don't say this is the model for everybody, nor is it the best, but it is a good one. Uh, making assessment more explicit, inventory of educational effectiveness. I want to you read across the top. These are the categories that, that are going to be looked at in the educational process of, of Foreman. Uh, what are the outcome, learning outcomes for this level program published? Please specify. Include URLs where appropriate. Next one, number two. Other than GPA, what data evidence is used to determine that graduates have achieved the stated outcomes for the degree? or the capstone course, portfolio reviews. Those are just examples, okay? Next, who interprets the evidence? What is the process annually by a curriculum committee, for example? Four, what changes have been made as a result of using the data and the evidence? And five, data of most recent program reviews for general education. Aha, it's not just each degree program for the breadth program at the institution, which is a landmark of this place also. Then if you go down the left at the institutional level for general education and for each degree program. And guess what? If you went down the left column farther in this document that may be viewed by some of you as a draft, but I know it'll, you'll see it more, is there's going to be chemistry and accounting and those academic units are going to go down the left side too. Educational quality. This might be understood more easily, as I say here, if I show you that. In this model, there's a chart that extends across the page. I just said it. And I'm glad to be able to indicate that Foreman will be engaged in this process in a disciplined and a regular and periodic manner in the, in the years to come, as far as I understand it. So what questions might come from this? Or what other things might be said about this? Well, what are the learning outcomes for this level program? Include the UR. Oh, this, I'm, I'm reading. Why am I saying that? Date, what changes can maybe just look at my notes, interpret the process, for example, annually. Ah, what changes can be considered, how you've made, because using it's that's what okay. Let me go back then. And all of all of this at the institutional, special at the general education level, and there will be as well 
other every program. A really good model. Does everyone have to follow this model? Should you jump at it? No, it might not fit exactly for you. That's not the objective. It might not work exactly for your institution, but this is an example of a good model of quality assurance and effectiveness within the academic part of the institution. Okay, it might be useful Hannah, to remind ourselves once more, the documents that result from the basis of constant review and the result form the basis of constant review and consistent implementa implementation. This kind of thing doesn't get once done once every five years. If it's effective, it will be cyclical and it will be updated. The priorities and objectives we are traffic tracking must fit, go back all the way to the beginning of my presentation, within the mission and goals of the organization, also developed through an iterative planning process. They might be nested in a discussion that should be reviewed periodically, and this is code for not making it just on an annual basis. And they must not be cast in stone because things are gonna change every time these processes are reviewed. A byproduct or a secondary value, which I've not commented much about, but I wanna talk about, is the development of teamwork that leads to a more consistent and comprehensive teamwork and a network, such an important secondary value in the institution. If the process I followed that I described about that summer and that iterative process at my institution, if you look at that and see what it takes for a group of people to work together ultimately to produce this, there is that secondary value that we all know more about what we each do we all have a bit of willingness to support what we each do, and the institution begins to function more as a whole. All right, I want to conclude. We can make this too complicated. We can end up just pushing paper. And we got to be really careful about that when we inaugurate these kind of programs. That's not the objective, to have a lot more paper. It takes a little bit more and it takes more time, and it takes more effort, but if it's integrated into the mission and the values of the institution you want to achieve, it's all worthwhile. Constant review. The priorities and objectives we are tracking must fit with the mission and goals of the organization through this iterative process. They must be nested in a discussion that should be reviewed periodically. And again, that's code for not just on an annual basis. They must not be cast in, in stone. And the byproduct, the secondary value, we're a better institution because we work better together. We know each other and we know each other's codes and we know what triggers things in us that maybe we don't like, and we know what we like, and we become a better organization through the process. We can make this too complicated conceptually, but when we are honest, quality assurance is at the core a process of determining what are the elements of successful education at our place, and then evaluating what we're doing to achieve it, then how well are we achieving it, and what are the plans to move it a step forward. To repeat, each priority in enough detail, who's responsible, who else to be engaged, what resources are available, what is the timetable for completion, what are the decisions, what's the financial impact, impact, and is there a process for feedback? So simple, so hard, and so necessary to achieve quality assurance.